Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well today we're going to create this menu hover effect here, another one in our series. And we're using a gradient today and it almost gives you a sort of switch type effect that pivots using the shadow and colors when you hover over it. Really easy to do, we're going to write a bit of custom CSS to do this today. Don't let that put you off. Any CSS I write, I'll put down below and you're welcome to use it and manipulate it how you will. So let's get started. I'll just move this out of the way. And here we are with a regular starting menu. I've got my background set to 444 and that hot pink color. That's set in our theme customizer. To get to the theme customizer, just go down to Divi to theme customizer or you can get there via appearance customize and once in the customizer if I go back to the root I'm in the header and navigation primary menu bar and as you can see I've set that background color to 444 and a sort of hot pink color for the active link there okay so let's start at the beginning here. I'm using Google Chrome for the great inspector tools. Most browsers have this nowadays, but if you want to use Chrome, it is a free download. So let's first make our boxes or make our links the size we want. I'm going to hover over a link and right click and inspect. That's going to bring up the inspector tools. And I want to work on the list items themselves here rather than the links today. And here we are, top menu, list item. And as I hover over there, you can see that they stretch from the top of the link, the word, all the way down to the bottom of the header. I want them to take up more real estate. I want them to stretch to the top of the header too. So I'm going to change the padding out. We've got a bit of padding right on the bottom here, but I'm going to override that. So I need to add, I know from previous videos, about 40 picks to the top of mine. Depending on the size of your font, you may have to add more or less. So I'm going to say padding. On the top, I want 40 pixels. This is going to look kind of crazy until I put all of them in there. And on the next one will be right. I want 10 pixels on the right. I don't want any on the bottom because we're doing okay on the bottom at the moment. So I'm just going to put zero in there. And for the left, I'm going to put 10 pixels also. Now, I'm overriding the style below the padding right, so I need to put important. Or exclamation mark important, and that should do it. If I just uncheck that. Now, you can see they're tall enough now, but they've been pushed down from the top. So to counter that, I'm going to give it some negative margin on the top. So I'll say margin top and we know we pushed them down by 40 picks so let's give it minus 40 picks to pull it back up to where it should be there we go now when we hover over they're stretching from top to bottom you can see is the green there okay next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a board around them one pixel but it's going to be transparent so you shouldn't see it but it will be taking up real estate. And the reason I'm going to put this here is because on the hover state when we create it, it's going to have a one pix border of a certain color. And if we don't put a transparent one in, in the regular state, it'll make our little icon skip a little there, our little logo, because it'll be adding two pixels to the height of the header. So it'll skip every time we hover over it and we don't want that. So let's put that on next. Let's say border. What type? Well, we'll have it one pixel thick, solid. It doesn't matter because it's going to be transparent. And it's going to be transparent. So, as I say, you can't see anything, but it has increased that header by two picks there. Okay, in the background, I want to put a gradient color. And I know this is 444. So I want it to be slightly darker one end and slightly lighter the other end, sort of, sort of 
just a shade. So if that's four, 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 I'm going to do three, three, three and five, five, five as the background. So let's put this one in next. And to do that, we, we have to say background image, although it's not an image, but it's treated like one. So it's background image. And I'm going to put in linear gradient. And open some round brackets and we'll put in the colors that we want inside the little round brackets there. I'm going to do 333, three, three, comma separate the colors, and 555. Five, five. And I'll just put a little semicolon on the end. We should be good. As you can see, that's in there now. It's got that slightly lighter color on the bottom and the darker color on the top, which almost looks, make it look like it's pushed in at the top and it's risen at the bottom. That's my impression anyway. <laughs> Yours may be different. Okay, so we're getting there. And I also want to extenuate, extenuate that effect by using a box shadow, an inset one. So let's put this down here. Box shadow. And I want to make it inset so it's inside rather than outside. And I'm going to make it zero picks by five picks. I'll say zero picks. So there's no lateral movement by five picks. So it's pushing it down by five picks. As you can see, it's happening up the top there. You could use that for an actual hard switch if you wanted to, then switch that around the other way. But I'm going to soften it out with a bit of a spread. So I'm going to say another five picks for the spread. I'm going to give it a dark color of 222, which again is a little darker than the color we've got going on there. Let's just give it a gap there. And the color, 222. As you can see, it's got that shadow at the top there, making it look more like it's indented at the top. Okay, so we need to make that permanent now. Because if I refresh this, that'll all disappear and it'll re revert back to normality. So I'm going to copy all of this from the closing curly tag there. So the first hashtag of the CSS ID top menu right there. And we need to write it into our CSS styles. To get to our styles, to write in the CSS, custom CSS box right here. Just go to your dashboard, down to Divi theme options I'm on the general tab the first tab and right down at the bottom of the page you'll find this you can also get there via appearance customize it'll be in your customizer at the bottom it is actually the same thing additional CSS right here if you want to write it in there but I like to use this box so I've copied that so let's paste it in here control V to paste and there it is now we can take away any that we're not using. So it's basically any that I didn't write, which is display and font size down at the bottom there. And that padding that we commented out. Just make sure we've got that closing curly bracket on the bottom. And we're good to go. I save my changes now. Once I refresh these page, this page, those should stay there. They should be permanent now. OK, so now we want to create the actual hover effect. And what I'm going to do to do this is I'm going to make that border our 222 color, same color as our shadow. And I'm going to flip the box shadow so it's at the bottom rather than the top. And I'll flip our gradient colors so they're the opposite way around. So I can do that all right with our custom CSS here. What I'm going to do is copy this whole entry, drop down a couple, put it in there. Now to create the hover state, after the list item li there, I'm going to put a colon, no space between the li and the colon, and the word hover, no space between the colon and the word hover also. So padding, that's not changing. We don't need that. 
margin tops not changing we don't need that we are going to change the border color so we'll keep the border but instead of transparent I'm going to make it that 222 color we used on the box shadow like I say this CSS I'll put it down below obviously you can make different colors and, and play with it yourself to get different effects if you've got a different color header and stuff okay the gradient I'm gonna flip around the other way so it'll be 555 five, five, and then 333 three, three. and the box shadow instead of five picks which is pushing it down by five picks I'm gonna make it minus five which will put it up so the shadow will appear more at the bottom there so it's a negative value on there now hopefully if we've done everything right that should work make sure I got a semicolon after every line there if you don't put a semicolon after each line it will not read the next line okay so let's save the changes now let's go back to our site and refresh. You shouldn't see anything initially. But when we hover over, they should switch around the other way. Great. As you can see, it's doing it. It's doing it pretty quick. And I'd also like to give it perhaps this color when it hovers over it. And slow it down slightly. So let's do that. This is our list item right here. This is our anchor tag. And we only want it on hover. So we're on this one. And it's list item, menu item, A. But we want it to be on hover. And we want to give it that same color as we had here. So we'll have a look at that color. I'll come and copy that in a minute. So we're on the right element, list item A. Let's make our class, it's a class as it says there. I'm gonna double click, get that class name, menu item. These are all classes, we just need that first one and we need to affect the anchor tag that's under it. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna go back to my custom CSS here. It's a class, so we need a dot or a period in front of it, then the class name. And then we wanna affect the anchor tag so we put an A there, but we only want it to affect when we hover on it. So again, colon and the word hover with no spaces. And then open and close some curly brackets. And inside is where we can write our code. So I want color, because we're changing the color of it. Now I want the color that we used up here. but we're overriding the default styles so I need to use the important on this one semicolon and I also wanted to sh slow the whole hover process down or process down just a little bit I wanted to take maybe half three quarters of a second something like that So that's working fine but it's kind of quick so to do that let's add a bit of transition duration to the regular state not the hover state transition dash duration let's give it 0 0.7 seconds if I put 07 well, that'll be 7 seconds and 0 0.7 seconds is what I want semicolon and let's save our changes okay well let's visit the site get rid of that inspector and see what we've got going on now again you shouldn't see any change initially now when I hover over yeah it's a little more gradual it's taking 0.7 of a second to flip and our color doesn't look as bright as this one because I think by default the opacity on the hover link is not full so it's a bit transparent so let's change that and we're done that's just on this one and we're going to be overriding the default style so I'll say opacity or see-throughness colon one which is fully visible 
0 is invisible, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. will give you grades of transparency. I'm overriding a star, so I need to put the important in there. Colon important. Or exclamation, I should say, important. Good. And that should do it. Save our changes. Let's go back to the site. Or refresh. And those anchor tags should be working perfectly now. There we go. That's a lot brighter when we do that. And like I say, we're just flipping the gradient around. It kind of gives the impression of a switch being pushed in at the bottom there. And that's a nice little effect to have on your site. Pretty easy to do too. Now, you could do one other thing as well. Our highlighted page there, which is the purple one, we could have that flipped around the other way so it looks like it's an engaged switch there if you wanted to, or leave it how it is. And that's the actual current item. If we right click and inspect on there, here's the link, here's a menu item. If we look up here, it says current menu item as one of the classes. So if we just select that, just double left click and select this one class right here. We can go back, drop down, and it's a class, so it needs to have a dot or a period in front of it. Let's open and close some curly brackets. And we want to flip the gradient, don't we? So that was our hover state gradient. So if I copy this, we're going to be overwriting the normal one, so I need to add the important after it again. Exclamation. Save the changes. Now when I refresh, that should flip the other way, so it should appear like that rather than like that. Let's see what happens. Let's get rid of our inspector. There we go. As you can see, that's the opposite ray round there. We need to change that that border from top to bottom though. So that's the box shadow. And again, we're overriding what's there. Let's try this. There we go. It's better the shadows on the bottom there. And if we flip to a new page, as you can see, that one's highlighted also. And our hover effects are all working there. So there you have it. There's how to add a sort of gradient effect button to your menu. I hope you've enjoyed this today. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.